Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss the Fréchet derivative, which is an infinite dimensional version of the gradient. And this will be a tool that we use in the adjoint state method, which is what I'll cover in the next video. It's sort of the bread and butter of large-scale inverse problems. And so the adjoint state method uh, will tie this video with the previous video on, on the Grange multipliers, plus an extra step. So what is the Fréchet derivative? It's a generalization of the gradient um, to infinite dimensions, infinite dimensional input space. So if I give you a finite dimensional input space, Rn, uh, and this function f, if you recall from calculus 3, we defined this directional derivative at the point x in the direction v as the limit as the perturbation size goes to zero of my perturbed of the difference between my perturbed f and my reference f values divided by the size of the perturbation. It turned out, again this is standard calculus 3 stuff, it turns out that this is the gradient of f of x dotted into v, where the gradient of f of x is the vector whose ith component is the ith partial derivative dotted into that vector v. And we called this a directional derivative. The infinite dimensional version of this we referred to as the Gateau derivative. And then we said, well, dotting into a vector v is kind of a boring operation, and really the meat of what we want is this gradient of f of x. So in shorthand, let's just call the derivative of f of x the gradient of f of x, understanding that when we want to take a directional derivative, we just dot it into that direction. And we called that the gradient, and the Fréchet derivative is really uh, what this gradient is. So recall that um, Gateau does not imply Fréchet. So these are actually entirely equivalent. So the Fréchet derivative in fi finite dimensions will be equal to the gradient, and the Gateau derivative will be equal to the directional derivative in finite dimensions. So Fréchet, Gateau differentiable in all directions, does not imply Fréchet, but Fréchet does Fréchet differentiable does imply the Gateau derivative. So just keep that in mind. There are counterexamples of this. This is sort of a classic homework problem that they give you in, in Calc 3 to show that the, you can have directional derivatives in all directions, but the function actually is not differentiable. Now, so how do we define the Gateau derivative or the Fréchet derivative? So similarly, I'm going to start with the Gateau derivative, and then I'll show you an example of how you define the Fréchet derivative from, from the Gateau derivative, assuming that it is actually Fréchet differentiable. So now let's take phi, and I'm going to do this on a Hilbert space, but it could be a normed linear space, but for our context, this is usually going to be a Hilbert space where we have an inner product. And this is going to map into the reals. And again, I could have this actually be for Fréchet differentiation. I could have this be an arbitrary domain. But again, for our context, we're optimizing real, uh, real valued functions. So let's just do it here. And we use this uh, delta to say, hey, look, we're, we're taking a a Fréchet or Gateau derivative here just to, to tip you off um, rather than DDX because DDX makes it look like it's finite dimensional. And we're going to take this derivative and similar to taking the directional derivative, I'm just going to put this x hat here on the right to say, hey, that's the direction I'm giving you. So the notation's a bit different on that front rather than a subscript you have it just on the right. 
and this is phi of x plus epsilon x hat, so that's my perturbed, minus phi of x, take the absolute value over epsilon x hat, where this is the h norm. And so this will be the Gateau derivative. So I'll just show the Frechet derivative with an example here. Let's, uh, let's go to orange here. So let's take phi. So first of all, h equals L2 of omega. And our inner product is the standard inner product here, where bar is complex conjugate. And phi of, let's call it u, is defined to be the integral of our data misfit, where d was our data. Then we just plug in. phi of u plus epsilon u hat minus phi of u over epsilon u hat. Ah, gosh, sorry. In the L2 sense. Now, it turns out that if you have sufficient smoothness of phi, This can actually be written as the following. This is much easier to calculate in practice. So again, in the context of inverse problems, I'm not going to give you any weird, typically you're not going to have super weird um, examples here. There will be one example I cover later called total variation regularization, but we'll, we'll discuss that later. But the point is, usually these are going to be smooth, right? This looks like a quadratic. It's like the simplest functional you could think of. So here, when you have sufficient smoothness, you can do this. So let's plug this in to see what this looks like. This is the integral of u of x plus epsilon u hat of x minus d of x squared. And then epsilon doesn't depend on the domain x, so you can pull it right inside the integral. Now, this looks like dd epsilon of some number a, because x is fixed. These are just numbers, a, b, and c squared. That's just equal to 2b a plus epsilon b minus c. So that's why it's super nice. So this would be 2u hat of x u of x plus epsilon u hat of x minus d of x dx. And we take the limit as epsilon goes to 0, and then this term will get eliminated. And this is 2 u hat of x, u of x minus d of x dx. Now, you can also rewrite this as u hat dotted into 2 Um, 2 times u minus d. Now, similar to up here, where we take the directional derivative and dot it into v, okay, this was for arbitrary v, then that will tell us that if the Frechet derivative exists, it's given by that rule where we implicitly know that We implicitly know that, okay, well, if we really want a directional derivative, we dot it into v. And so at that point, so this is the, and then just, I'm just going to say, if it exists, 
we write that this is just 2u minus d, knowing that what we mean by that is dot it with u hat with that function. So I just mentioned if it exists because, again, technically you can have Gateau derivatives in all directions, but then the Fourier derivative technically doesn't exist. In general, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this later in the next video, but we ultimately, this is actually the condition we really need. We don't actually need Fourier dif differentiable. But in the context, again, we will usually have sufficient smoothness so that the Fourier derivative is, is, is well defined. Thank you guys for watching. And in the next video, again, I'll discuss the adjoint state method. And that is sort of the, the bread and butter of, of uh, inverse problems from, from here on out.